So now that we have the background detail added and then the middle ground detail added, it's time to add uh, the refining detail, which is going to really start to bring everything to life. So we're going to add the highlight shadows and then any other um, little details that are going to just add to this overall composition here. Um, so to get started, I'm going to add a new layer. And I'm going to make sure this layer is on the top. I'm going to double click to call this detail layer. And remember that you are going to highlight everything when you're finished with it and drag and drop it into that detail layer. That way you can have everything separated out. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and hide my middle detail layer. So I'm going to click that little eyeball next to it. And then I'm also going to hide the background detail so that I can just see the picture. And if I go to uh, the other image that I was working on with this, you can see all of that extra detail that we're about to add that really brings it to life. So you can see shadows on the face, highlights, um, and then those little details such as eyelashes, eyebrows, uh, the line of the lips, and then highlights and shadows on the shirt as well. So that's what this uh, next step is going to be working with. For the detail layer, instead of using the pen, I'm going to click right where that pen tool is found and click that drop down arrow. We're actually going to be using the freehand for this because there is a lot of small detail and this actually makes it just a little bit easier to outline specific spots to fill in with highlights and shadows because it doesn't have to be as exact when you're outlining the shape of it as the outline of the face and uh, the medium details did with the pen tool. So if you feel more comfortable with the pen tool, you can still use that if you don't really like how the freehand tool works. Um, but again, this just might make it a little bit easier as we're working. So I'm going to start looking for areas of detail to outline and fill in to start bringing this to life. Um, instead of using the pen tool for this, I'm going to use something called the freehand tool, which is similar to a paintbrush tool, um, just because it's going to uh, make, make our job a little bit easier or uh, work a little bit quicker as you're outlining versus the pen tool. Um, however, if you do feel more comfortable with the pen tool, definitely use that instead of the freehand tool. Um, but again, there's a lot of areas of detail, so since it doesn't have to be outlined as exact as the medium and the background detailed layer, um, it's going to work just a little bit easier for this. So I'm gonna grab the freehand tool, which is underneath the drop down for the pen tool. And I'm going to really zoom in. So it's going to make it a lot easier if you're able to zoom in up close to whatever you're uh, using that freehand tool with. So I'm zooming in on the eye. And I'm going to use this freehand tool and just outline right around uh, the darker area where those eyelashes are. And you'll notice as I'm outlining this, it's kind of smoothing out my line a little bit for me. So that's going to um, definitely make a difference as well. The more zoomed in you are, the smoother your outline will become. Um, so I, again, I would definitely recommend zooming in on your image. But I'm going to hide my border, hide the fill, grab that eyedropper tool, and then fill in um, that darker area there. So I'm gonna just continue around uh, with the freehand tool and outline all the way around these different parts of the image to begin adding more detail. So I'm gonna hide the fill, grab the eyedropper, find that darker brown value, and extend around the outside here. So I would go around um, eyelashes, maybe look for the shadows first. Uh, you could even look for smaller details like around this medium value for the edge of the eye. The more areas of detail that you're able to add, the um, better your overall image will look. So again, I would look for as many areas that you can go back and touch up um, with the freehand tool here. Then I'm also going to touch up the eye because if you remember what that medium layer looked like, it just had uh, that green part of the eye, but we also want this darker um, part of the eye here. So I'm going to use that eyedropper, grab that black color. You can even go around the outside of the eye where it's a darker green color.
to help kind of touch up different areas. So I'm going to go around the outside here. And then look for highlights as well. So there's uh, the highlight on the top part of the eye here. So I'm just going to outline quickly around that lighter valued area. And fill that in. And then I'm also going to look for different values underneath the eye or parts of the skin as well. So this will definitely make a di big difference on your image if you're able to add highlights on the skin too. So I'm going to zoom out and then if I bring back my, when I scroll down a little bit, if I bring back my medium layer or unhide that and then unhide my background, you can start to see how this is really coming to life as I have more and more detail added. So a lot of that eye is starting to uh, come to life there. I'm going to hide my middle layer again, hide my background layer again, and continue. So next I might move on to the eyebrow. So I'm going to outline around this. Again, some areas such as this eyebrow are kind of hard to see maybe what completely to outline. So you might need to somewhat kind of make it up um, and then you can always come back and fix it if you feel like it doesn't doesn't completely work for you. Then you could continue on and go maybe to the right eye, right eye, the right eyebrow, um, but I'm going to move down to the nose here. I need to hide my uh, middle detail layer and then I'm going to look for any areas of value change here. So even though some areas are hard to see, Try your best to find those areas that you can outline. Remember, the more detail, the better. So even if um, you can't really tell if it's a different value, maybe try it and then um, use that eyedropper tool. And eventually, when you bring layers back, you will either see it or it might be the same color as the skin that you had before, and that's okay. But I would definitely try to add um, more areas with the eyedropper tool here um, than not adding layers. So on the top of the nose, again, it's tricky to see, but there's a little bit lighter value. So I can outline around this and use that as a highlight. And then maybe around here, I can add a highlight as well. And then maybe come down to the lips, grab that freehand tool. Um, and I'm just gonna outline that center part of the lips. I'm just going to do half at one time and then I'll do the other half um, because sometimes it can be hard to do a long extended line um, and continue it the entire way. So I'm going to extend this out. And then from here, maybe look for any highlights around the mouth. So there's a little bit of a highlight above the top lip there. Grab that eyedropper tool, try to find uh, where that highlight or lighter part of the skin is. Um, there's a bit of a shadow underneath the lip, so I can outline that. And then don't forget to zoom out sometimes and look for other areas of highlights and shadows. So this part of the face is definitely a lot darker. So I'm going to outline around this and fill that in. Now one thing I do want to mention is when we uh, bring our layers back in a minute, you'll be able to play around with the opacity. So sometimes some areas might look a little bit too dark or too light, um, but you can adjust the opacity later on. So I would go ahead and try to outline around um, as much as you can. Again, looking for areas of highlights, shadows, all that detail. Um, so this, this part of the chin here. Um, top of the ears, there's highlights, shadows in the ears. Um, for the hair, you don't necessarily have to outline every single detail. So I would just look for some of the main chunks of hair. So you have this kind of highlight up here that we can grab. Um, and then maybe look for other areas that are a little bit lighter. So up here, maybe outline some of this. And then... Um, also look for those shadows with the hair. So there might be some shadows underneath over here. You can fill that in. But 
every once in a while, remember to zoom out, unhide your middle ground and background layers to see what it looks like. So right now you can see that this spot is definitely way too dark. So I'm going to take that right away and just bring that opacity down so it blends in a little bit more. Um, I can take that down more. You can also play around with blur. So something like this does look a little bit cut out. So I'm going to bring that blur and adjust that out a little bit as well. So that way it kind of blends in with the skin more. Maybe this highlight, same thing. Um, but when you're finished, it should look uh, something like this image. Maybe not as much detail, but you can see where there's those shadows added on the face. There's the highlights. Um, and then there's the different highlight shadows in the ears, hair, and on the shirt as well. So when you are finished with doing that, definitely uh, save it. So file, save to cloud, um, and that's going to save it as just a Gravit design file. Um, and then if you are finished with this as well, you can save it as a JPEG to submit. Um, the next video or the last step is going to be adding details to the background and then showing you some different directions that you can take your final portrait. So using different colors, how to apply gradients and things like that. So check out that last step before you do submit and finalize this image.